subject and topic um, last days last days activities last days activities uh, that I think and believe that we need to uh, pay more attention to uh, and or give heed to uh, as a society as a world as a people uh, definitely uh, as the body of Christ uh, last day activities um, that are ever before us um, that we are seeing them manifested more and more um, as the, the, the times go by. And a lot of people just take them for granted as though the Lord, as Scripture says in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, um, you know, slackness concerned His promise. Uh, but it's not slackness, but it's long-suffering toward us. Is long suffering toward us because it's not God's will that none perish, um, but at all come unto uh, repentance. In other words, that people would, you know, get their lives right with God. Um, the Lord had given people time; He's given uh, us opportunities uh, to get it right with Him. Whether they are healthy and well, everything seems to be going good or whether they are sick in their body, or whether they could be in intensive care, whatever the state of condition of their lives. Um, we must be born again, have a relationship with Christ, be filled with His Spirit, uh, because He's coming soon. He's coming again. That's the promise of God. That's what the Word of the Lord declares. So we are awaiting those that are born again in expectancy of His return. And uh, Jesus said, no man knoweth the day nor the hour that the Lord has come, is going to come, or he's going to return. But there are certain things that we can pay attention to and begin to see and take note of that it's not far away. That it's not far away. And uh, the devil uses certain things against people. Well, he hasn't come yet, and they've been saying he's been coming for thousands of years, and... Um, he still had to come. And so people cast off restraints, cast off holy godly living, and the principles and the commands of the Word of God, and begin to live like they want to live. But the Lord is coming, as Scripture talks about, as a thief in the night. That we don't know when He's coming or when He's going to show up, but we don't want to find ourselves out of position. We don't want to find ourselves out of covenant relationship with God. We want to make sure that we're properly positioned in our spirit, properly positioned in our minds, and definitely for sure that we have accepted and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that He is the Son of God, died for the sins of the world, and rose again on the third day. That He's not only Lord, but... He is he's, he's Lord and Savior of our lives. Uh, so I just want to do an overview here of Matthew 24. Um, the entire chapter, um, you know, Jesus is, is beginning to talk about and, and give a lot of information in reference to some things that would happen before his return. Uh, but he said to the apostles as he ascended back into heaven, uh, why stand ye gazing into heaven that this same Jesus, not a different one, not a make-believe one or some, somebody in heaven, but this same Jesus, the Son of God, that was crucified and died and rose again, you saw his works, you saw his power, you saw him fulfilling the will and the mandate of his Father. The same Jesus that suffered, that bled and died, rose again, ascended back up to heaven, the same Jesus, he's coming again. Why stand ye gazing into heaven? So people are very easy to get distracted and not understanding uh, that the Lord's word is true and that God's word is faithful, it's tried and tested. He said before one jot and one tittle would not come to pass, the whole heavens and earth would pass away. So in Matthew chapter 24, I'll, I won't go through the whole uh, discourse of this, um, but I, I will start reading. Um, at verse um, number 4. At verse number 4. Um, no, let's start at verse number 3. 
verse 3, Matthew 24 and 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or the end of the age? Very potent, very loaded question. Should be of the utmost concern for any and everybody. Uh, and so uh, Jesus says the end of the world or the end of the age or the end of time as we know it. Because even when people die, they step out of time into eternity. Step out of time into eternity or where you people will live forever in the presence of God with Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, that will be heaven for me. Or they will be separated from God in eternal damnation and torment for the rest of eternity. So they are asking a very pertinent, potent, and important question. And in verse 4 it says, Then Jesus answered and said unto them, He says, To take heed that no man, no person deceives you. Isn't that interesting? It ain't interesting that he could have said a whole lot of things as a starter, as a beginning point to begin to answer their question. But he said, take heed that no man deceive you because deception is one of the strongest, most powerful things that cause people not to accept Christ or lose out on a salvific walk with God. There's a lot of things that stem from deception or self-deception. But he says that no man would deceive, that no man would trick you, that no man would work with crap over you, over your mind, to lie to you that I'm not coming again. So she says to take heed, be careful, be aware, be conscious, be cognizant of the fact that you can be deceived. Verse 5 says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many shall deceive many. And we see today that multitudes of people are walking in and with and by a spirit of deception. And if it wasn't so, we, I believe, would see lifestyles change. Mindsets change to where they're walking and living out their lives in fear and reverence and in awe that God is truly, Jesus is truly coming again. He's truly coming again. So therefore we understand that we have pre prepared ourselves. we in the proper posture and position uh, that when the Lord comes that we'll be caught up with Him in the air. We'll be caught up with Him in the air. So it says, Many will come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Apostates, impostors, false prophets, false teachers, just liars and connivers. Verse 6, he said that he shall hear wars and rumors of wars. He said, see that ye do not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. And Jesus said, even with all of this, he said, the end is not yet. Now, we're not going to go into Revelation today, but it, it talks about some specific things um, that will be, begin to happen and manifest also and see... Um, uh, that we'll see in the earth, a lot of them will be after the church is caught up as uh, uh, we understood and we know and, and, and learn. Uh, now, and, and, and a rapture, the catching away uh, of the church of uh, God. The church of God. Uh, but I believe that we will begin to get a taste of some of those things. And I believe that we are experiencing some even now, just not in the fullness and the magnitude of what will be. Or what shall be, or what's to come. So, um, just to give you one um, illustration, it says that the sun will be so hot that it will scorch men's back, and they'll still curse God. And we're experiencing all kind of weather patterns and crazy stuff that's going on. Uh, 